Learn how to develop custom multi-vehicle simulations using Python and Flight Gear. I'll be showing you how to use multiple flight trajectory files and simulate two vehicles at the same time in Flight Gear, leveraging the Python multi-processing module, the multi-threading module, as well as the multiplayer feature in Flight Gear. You will be able to build very cool simulations like this example shown over here. And I'll also be providing the example files so that you can build off this for your own projects. Let's start. So just to recap, Flight Gear is a free open source flight simulator. I've made videos on how to use MATLAB and Simulink with it by using the aerospace toolbox. In addition, I've also showed you guys how to use Python with Flight Gear using the Flight Gear Python library. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use Python with two Flight Gear instances to visualize two vehicles at the same time and see how they interact. So for this, we'll be using the multiplayer feature in Flight Gear. Let's go over the architecture of it and let's see how it works. The first thing you do is that you have to start two instances of Flight Gear instead of one. In the commands, they are quite similar, but you will have to use this multiplay feature. So let's look at that on the left here. We have multiplay in 10 localhost port one. So localhost means you are doing it on your same machine. Otherwise, you will have to use a different server name. Port 1 and port 2 can be any values and you will have to switch them in the second instance. So if you look very closely, the in goes to port 2 and the out goes to port 1 in the second instance and in the first one, they are flipped. When it comes to sending data over UDP, you will basically just have to create two more port instances, RX port 2 and TX port 2. The UDP ports should not be the same number. They should all be different values. And that's how you can send commands to two flight gear instances. You might be wondering, okay, how to actually do this, right? The first thing you do is you start two flight gear instances and you choose your aircraft in them. You can have a different trajectory script for each one. You define your ports and you can spawn a class. So we'll be using the Python multi-threading feature to do this. And I will show you that later how it's done. But let's look at my example. So in my case, I have, I have two files, trajectory 1.csv and trajectory 2.csv. They both contain the trajectory for the first and the second aircraft respectively. You might be wondering why to use different files. It's because we will be using multi-threading and if you use the same file, if you have two threads that access one file, that is called the race condition and you will have to use a mutex to prevent this. This will result in slight delays because it will lock the first thread while the second thread will access the file and vice versa. So the idea is that you don't want two threads to access the same file. For my aircraft, I've used custom CAD files, which I have made. I had made a video on this many years ago to show you how you can actually define a custom CAD file, make it in SOLIDWORKS, and then convert that into AC and then put that into Flight Gear by using AC3D. And I'll link that video here as well so you can do it yourself. In my case, I have two ports for the instance one. So RX port one, TX port one. That is set respectively to 5501 and 5502. You can choose any any number based on what ports are available on your machine. For RX port 2 and TX port 2, so that is the second flight gear instance, I have 5503 and 5504. For multiplayer, you have to assign port 1 and port 2. So in my case, I have 5000 and 5001. You can see here on the right top that both these instances will run at the same time and you will spawn two threads which send data to flight gear. And that's how you can actually visualize two aircraft at the same time. Let's see now. The Python integration of this. Let's look at the Python script which interacts with Flight Gear. So it is the exact same as I showed you before in the last video I had made on using Flight Gear Python to interface the two, along with the one in my GNC course, which I just uploaded a few months ago. The one thing I've done is based on a recommendation of a subscriber and a student in my course, I converted it into a class which can be instantiated instead of using just a script. So when you use a class, I make it into a class called flight gear connector and then I define a bunch of methods to initialize. So let's look at the first initialize constructor. I have my rx port, tx port and file name which you can pass in as arguments. It'll basically just assign the values here. Initially you don't have any data stored because I don't read the trajectory file right away. I just assign blank values for the data as well as my iterator self.i which will just iterate and then restart every time. The next command is load inputs. 
So here is where I use the file to read my trajectory data by using the pandas library here. I then store it into my latitude, longitude, height, along with my orientation angles, roll, pitch, and yaw. So after the load inputs command, I can then set up my flight dynamics model connection. So that's FDM connection. I can define my event pipe. So that's using my callback here. I can then also connect my receiver and my transmitter. Since I am doing this entire flight dynamic simulation on my local machine, I'm using localhost as my argument or my IP address. Looking at the flight dynamics model callback, FDM callback, just for now I've hard coded this, but for you it'll be different. I just set my latitude and longitude the same because I am simulating at the same point and I'm just doing a change in height. So just for me, it is like this, but for you, it'll be different based on your individual file. I can then assign my FDM data here and then return it. So this callback is my simulator. It'll just iterate in that file and it'll plot my position and orientation on the flight gear software at each iteration. So you will see the trajectory with time. Then the last command I have is run simulator. This method just starts the connection and then starts this callback, then continues it along. So that's my whole simulator. So it's pretty much the same as the script you had seen before, but I made it into a class. That's all. So the benefit of using the class is that I don't need to have a different script. I can just instantiate this class multiple times. And that is done in this file here, main.py. So when you download it, you should see it here. So the first thing I do is import multi-threading because I need it. And then I import my flight gear connector class here. What I do is I have two instances, flight one and flight two. So that's my R export, T export. As I showed before, I have 5501, 5502 for instance one, and then these two for instance two. I have different files for each instance, trajectory one and trajectory two. Let's open them and see what they look like. I basically just have a vertical takeoff of a rocket and the the payload at the top. So trajectory one is the rocket itself. It's the rocket body. So you can see that it's pretty much the same latitude, longitude, but the height will change with time. It goes from like 165 meters to I think about 500 or so. Yep. It goes about 512 meters and then it goes back down. So it descends again. The pitch angle is negative. 90 because it's pitching up the, the roll and the yaw are zero because it's just going up straight let's look at trajectory two it's similar to trajectory one in the case that i have a vertical takeoff it's just the capsule of the rocket and since the capsule is on the top of the rocket it'll be offset by some height so you can see that and then 195 there it just offset by 30 meters on top so that's my trajectory two file in my case, however, when the rocket takes off, it'll hover and the capsule will stay in place. It'll not go back down. So it'll separate like this. So it means that the capsule or the payload will just stay hovering here. And you can see that over there. It stays at 5, 545. It just, it doesn't go down again, right? It just stays there. While the rocket body, it descends. So when you visualize it, you will see exactly how it is. Looking at this main.py, when I make my instances, I pass in my ports and my file. When that's done, I can start a um, thread here. So I can define a thread and that's the argument run simulator. It's this method here. Then you can start the threads and then join them. So join waits for the threads to finish before exiting main. Because you want to run the threads, right? Like main, main itself is a thread so if, if you had used detach then it'll just exit without waiting for these to finish but you want these to finish so that's why i'm joining them and then i can just put a print statement at the end let's now do it in flight gear the first thing i do is start two flight gear instances as you can see there i then choose my aircraft i define this as cat files the next thing i do is look at my settings so make sure the port numbers are configured appropriately for each instance So I'm just configuring it there. So 
So make sure this is correct, as you have seen in the example diagram. Going back to my aircraft, just configuring those and then I'm just going to press fly. You can choose the location to wherever it is based on your settings. So when I start my flight gear, I'll just load the flights and then just put it side by side so I can just see how they, if they're connected or not. So once they connect, you will see this hello message pop up. So, so that's the graphics glitch on the left side where you don't see the, the payload, but you might get, you may not see it based on your settings. I'm just going to change my view there because for sometimes I don't see it all the time. It just based on your graphics setting, you may or may not see that glitch, but hopefully it, it looks good for you. I'm just going to open up Python. And now I'm just going to run, run my script. So that's just go to my file here. And then just, I'm just going to run main. You should see now that if you look carefully, the rocket on the right has the payload on the top and it'll slowly take off now. So the script has begun. It's just doing the simulator here. So you'll see the departure there and it's, looks quite smooth the rocket takes off with the payload on the top so the payload is using trajectory 2.csv and the rocket is using trajectory 1.csv they are both separate csv files and they contain a vertical takeoff so the height will change with time everything else stays the same so the rocket does not move side to side you can change views and see what it looks like it's quite cool you know i think this is quite very interesting that you can actually do it for two vehicles and you can see what it looks like there you can use this for many applications, like for example, missile guidance or missile chasing an aircraft, you, you can do it over there. It could be like, for example, a rocket launch and stage separation as well. Any application where you have two vehicles, this can be a good option for it. So you can see what it looks like there. Now you'll see the rocket separate. It kind of descended there. So if you see the stage, it's now going descending again. <laughs> The first stage is going down while the payload is staying in orbit, so it's like hovering there in place. And on the left side, if you see the rocket stage one is descending there, and it'll slowly descend back, back to the ground. And then this will repeat. So that's pretty much a basic example of how you can visualize two aircraft in flight gear at the same time by using multiplayer. And I hope you find it interesting. You can now extend this concept and do it for many other ways and applications. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and if there's any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.